Hi, I'm Alice. Hi, and I'm Sophie. And we are the directors of The Joyful Web. And today we are going to talk about imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sophie, how, how would you define imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is kind of like the dip that tries to bring you down. Um, and it, it's the voice in your head that tells you that you don't know what you're doing and that you're a fraud and that any minute now, despite all of the years of experience and all of the evidence that your life and your work has shown to the contrary, that someone's going to find out that you're just bullshitting everything and everything's going to come tumbling down. <laughs> And it's really, it's really insidious. And it's a real issue for so many business owners, not just business owners, people in general. Um, and it's something that we have a lot of experience with. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we were just saying earlier, which is the reason that we, we hit record, because we were having a conversation that we thought it would really help to share with you. Um, that when we were younger, so like in our 20s, when we were working for other people and, and kind of working up the career ladder, imposter syndrome wasn't really something we experienced. Like we both kind of blagged our way into jobs that we weren't quite qualified enough for. I, um, I remember when I was like, I was like trying to, you know, give the impression that I knew what I was talking about. And, and I went for a job interview uh, for a social media role and they asked me what an algorithm was. And I was like, sorry, I've not heard that word before. And like, that's for me, that's the best story of like how much of a blagger I was and how much confidence I had, even to make myself look like a massive tit. Yeah. Because I just thought I was the bee's knees. And when I went for my first agency role, I, I literally, I messaged the MD of the agency because I'd seen her speak at a business event and I thought she was fantastic. And I, I literally sent her a message on Twitter that was like, hi, I see you're advertising for this manager role. Um, I have no agency experience, but the role sounds really exciting and I think you're awesome. And if I applied, like, would you, like, would you actually consider me? Um, here's the experience I have. And I think it would translate really well to, to what you're asking for. And she was like, yeah, great. Come in, have an interview. And I did. And that was my first agency job. And I was like 25. Yeah, exactly. Well, my first agency job, I put in watermark on uh, my um, my letter, my cover letter, pick me, and <laughs> the whole thing. Like, seriously, seriously, confident, ballsy young women, which is great. We want more of those. Yeah. But then what happened? It was like we got to a point where we quit our jobs. We were starting out together in, in our business. And then, like it just ascended of this self-doubt and like confidence just went through the floor. Yeah. And I think like for me, certainly my personal experience of imposter syndrome is that the more you know and the more knowledge you gain and the more you become aware of all of the things that are to know and all of the things you don't know, that voice gets louder. So it almost becomes like a paradox in that the more experience and knowledge you gain, the louder that voice gets because your, your mind almost opens up to like everything that there is possibly to know. So yeah. it, it's like, actually the more qualified you get and the more knowledgeable you get, a lot of the time your imposter syndrome gets worse. Yeah, and it, that reminds me of that saying, like it's the wise man who knows how little he knows mm. and the fool thinks he knows it all. And the fool, which is us in our earlier years, <laughs> although, you know, it actually worked obviously, but um, you know, it, it's that sort of, if you think you know everything, you have that bravado, but the more that you understand that you don't know, and also you made a really interesting point earlier about the more that you have to lose. Yeah. It's this kind of this, this fear and this self-doubt builds and builds and builds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's super, super common. I, I would say pretty much everyone we've worked with has had an experience of imposter syndrome in, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for you, how, how would you say that your imposter syndrome manifests like what does it feel like and what are the situations that trigger yours I think it, it it feels like insecurity like for me it's 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 fear but it shows up as insecurity and self-doubt um which then leads to me comparing myself to other people mm -hmm. which then leads to me with a whole load of dialogue around not being good enough not 
you know, doing enough, like, you know, all of this quite mean self-talk mm-hmm. is a result of my sort of shaky ground where I'm, I'm not trusting myself enough and I'm not actually giving myself the credit that experience has given me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it really is about insecurity and that, and there's no, you can't be creative from a space of insecurity. Nice. It's really hard to build connections and, and be there out in the space for clients or, you know, for anyone mm-hmm. from a space of insecurity. Mm-hmm. So it impacts absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like a lot of the situations that trigger it are around like sh- publicly kind of sharing my knowledge or sharing my opinions. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like, like I, I literally experience the fear that there are people out there watching me, waiting for me to slip up and say the wrong thing so that they can like jump out and be like, ha, ah, told you you were a fraud. No, I told no, you no, so no. What talking about. <laughs> And I'm like, what? When has that ever happened in my life? Why? Why is this a fear? I don't say what kind of a person like is waiting for somebody else to fail anyway. Like, but this is also <laughs> what to create. But like, what? What a demonstration of ego there that like I think anyone is even paying me that much attention. A lot of people just what tw- the curtain twitching, just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really, but that this is actually you know this is this is imposter syndrome is a creation of the ego. It's it is a direct response to your brain thinking or our brains thinking that we aren't safe, mm-hmm. and that's what happens when you push yourself out of your comfort zone. The brain goes no 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 like this isn't safe, and then tries to find all the reasons why, and usually the reasons why are you can't do this mm-hmm. or who do you think you are or you're not good enough. Or they're so much better. Don't even bother trying. You know, that's, that's a very common loop that a lot of us experience. Absolutely. And what, what, I mean, what would you say has helped you kind of get past impulse syndrome? Like, obviously, it's something that kind of almost like flares up again and again and again. But like when it flares up, what helps you step past it? First of all, recognizing it. Um, and giving it a name helps because it, it helps to sort of take the power away. Um, it helps me to realize that those kind of thoughts aren't me, that, that it's just my brain trying to, to keep me safe. And sometimes I'll even kind of go, thank you very much, but you're not needed right now. Um, I, I have a whole load of different tools that help me with my confidence, um, like grounding, really feeling into my, my feet and, and sort of trying to bring the energy downwards is really powerful. Um, and also just repeating in my set to myself in my head, like, yes, I can. Like, yes, I can is my, my go-to mantra for pretty much everything. Um, because I find that if I'm just repeating that over and over again, then I'm not thinking the other horrible things about myself. <laughs> Completely. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think as well, like for me, a lot of it is kind of going into that space, you know, li- literally like I just did then, like going into that space of like, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid these people are going to jump out and point the finger. Is this actually likely? No, that's <laughs> probably not going to happen. So, you know, what is the worst that could happen? And, and actually knowing the, the people that I know and the kind of people that we engage with and the kind of responses we've had, be- we've had before, the worst that can happen is if I say something that's not true, someone will comment or send me a private message that says actually I don't think that's quite right or oh can you explain what you mean by that a bit more and then that will force me to reflect and expand my knowledge or reconsider my opinion so actually just putting myself out there could you know will probably help with my own knowledge and and development as well Mm-hmm. And, and I think as well, a lot of kind of what I say, you know, to myself when I'm thinking about, you know, going out there on video or creating a course or writing a blog or speaking at an event is what I have to say probably won't help everyone, but it will help someone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, am I going to let my own fears stand in the way of having my story and my experience and my knowledge be able to help someone? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we come back again and again and again. So like, you know, the, the kind of core principle of marketing that we work on is asking, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. Like knowing how you can help people needs to override that fear. 
if you're gonna if you're gonna step into your step into your power yeah a hundred percent and it's also about coming outside of your internal dialogue into a much more interconnected us rather than just I where the ego thrives Mm -hmm. and and to realize that it doesn't actually really matter at all if you don't get it perfect. It, yeah. it doesn't matter at all if you don't always know exactly the right words to say. Mm-hmm. Like it actually just matters that you show up and you share yourself as authentically as you can. Yeah, like, yeah. it's that. that yeah. sounds so really. simple, but that is all that matters. Completely, and I, you know, I I keep coming back to this, and I know I've spoken to to um to you about this several times. But a couple of years ago, I saw the editor in chief of Psychology's magazine speaking at an event. Su- I can't remember her surname. Susie, um, is her first name. But she she spoke at an event about how she experienced imposter syndrome when she first started editing the magazine and feeling like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And hearing her talk, you know, this incredibly successful, powerful woman who, you know, is is the editor in chief of this massive national magazine, also experiencing imposter syndrome, was like, oh my goodness, no, nobody is immune from this. And the difference between, you know, you and that person is that they didn't listen to the fear; they felt it and they kept on pushing anyway mm-hmm. and just tried. And one of the key things she said that that really stuck with me is that courage is a muscle. You have to build it and you wouldn't expect to, you know, wake up one morning having never run before and decide you're going to run a marathon. You know, the same as you wouldn't wake up one morning and be like, I'm going to be the CEO of a massive business. Like you you have to. You I think I probably did that a few times when I was young. <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> but you have to take the steps and you have to exercise those little bits of courage and getting out of your comfort zone bit by bit every day and and that's the difference yeah absolutely um and if you're watching this and any of this resonates with you we would love to hear your experience of imposter syndrome or any tips that you might have on how you move through those periods of of fear that are so 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 common for all of us we would love 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 to hear your insights in the comments below and, you know, like we said, you know, when, when we were having this conversation earlier, we, you know, at the moment, business owners, by, by virtue of the current situation, business owners are being called upon to be more visible online, to put themselves out there more. And so this is coming up for so many people that we're speaking to, which is, mm-hmm. which is why we were speaking about it. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Not alone. You're really not. Get in touch if you, if you need any support or any kind of cheerleading, then... We are always your girl. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. (laughs) Thanks. Until next time. Bye.